everybody, and welcome to Nightline. I am your host for the evening. I am Annie T. Broughton, and I am so happy. I'm super excited to be in your homes on this evening. We're going to have a wonderful time on Nightline tonight. We do have an amazing guest with us on Nightline, and he's Pastor Marcus Gill, and he's the author of I See More love. Oh my God. So what I always ask you to do is call someone and ask them to tune in, to tweet in, to message in, to Facebook live in, whatever they need to do. Let's ask them to call in tonight. We do have prayer partners on hand, so we would love to hear from you tonight and pray with you concerning your need, whatever you may be going through on tonight. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. I do have a scripture that I would love to share for your hearing tonight. And it's lifted from 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And it reads, so now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Oh my God. And I believe the reason why the Holy Spirit is saying the greatest of these is love is because God is love. Can somebody at home say God is love tonight? Oh, my God. It says, I mean, God so loved the world. That includes you and me and everybody else that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Oh, my God. That's good news. But have everlasting life. We are wrapped up. We are swallowed up in the love of God. I, re I remember reading the story about Mary when Jesus was born and how she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Well, that's how God swallows us up. He's, he wraps us up in his love and, and he lays us in his bosom. He said, oh, how I love you. Oh my God, we, we serve a good God, a kind God and a just God. Our musical guest tonight is none other than Elaine Mitchell, Jones. Oh my God. So we need to give God a hand clap for her tonight. And right now she's getting ready to sing Arise, Oh God. Amen. Praise God. I want to give God some glory so that he will arise in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Arise, Oh God. And take your place. And take your place. Let your kingdom be established. Let your kingdom be established. Oh, ancient of days. For you are good. You are good. And your mercy. And your mercy endureth forever. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you today, God. We ask that you too arise. Take your place. Take your place. We enthrone you with we our worship. You with our worship. We come to praise your name. Glorify your name. Because you, you are good. And your mercy. And your mercy enduring forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Arise. Just shall live by faith. Just shall live by faith. Cause you are, you are good. good. And your mercy. And your mercy enduring Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We say, arise, oh God. Arise, oh God. And take your place. Forever. 
Wow, so as you can see, we're going to have a wonderful time tonight on Nightline. I tell you what, Psalmist Elaine Mitchell Jones, she sang that song, Arise, Oh God. I tell you what, and we're already having people call in tonight, so pick up your phones and call in, text in, email in, whatever you need to do, because we're going to have an awesome time tonight on Nightline. And I tell you, our guest tonight is Pastor Marcus Gill. Woo! I was listening to some of his tapes on the way out here and yesterday and the day before. And I tell you, this mighty man of God is an encourager from the heart. I call him the love pastor. So, Pastor, how you doing tonight? The love pastor. The love pastor. <laughs> I'm going to carry that with me. I'm doing great tonight. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. We are so happy. I tell you, uh, I hope you can feel the joy that's coming from me tonight because absolutely. We are so happy and thankful yeah, I, to have you that, with us. That, that woman of God who just sang just really <laughs> took us to another level. Like, I'm, I'm ready to have church right now. And I, I wish we were in a sanctuary we could run around. You know, I can't tear this place up. So I'm glad to be with you. I'm excited about God, too. Amen. Praise God. So, Pastor, you know, before we even go into uh, the interview about your book, I want to learn some things about you tonight. Tell us, the, the viewer and audience, about Pastor Marcus Gill. Well, again, I'm, I'm Marcus Gill. Uh, <laughs> I live here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and uh, I'm the husband to my beautiful wife and best friend, Dominique Gill, and we have two beautiful daughters, Madison and Macy. Uh, Madison uh, just turned three, and uh, Macy is going on six months now. And so wow. uh, we have a beautiful growing family. Uh, I lead Marcus Gill International, which is a ministry that has really I've been blessed to stretch across the globe uh, and be a blessing to so many people. I love writing books. I love uh, doing music. Uh, I love preaching the word. I love traveling and I love seafood. I think that's one. <laughs> I love some seafood. But most importantly, I love uh, going on this journey with the Lord, doing what God called me to do. Yeah. And I'm so excited to be here with you tonight to share with you and your audience what the Lord is doing. Well, we're excited to have you. So, I mean, because when I, when I knew you were coming, I had never met you before. But yeah. when I was learning about you, I said, oh, my God, he is so, <laughs> such a mighty man of God. Wow. You've been everywhere. Okay. You've done everything. You've been mm. on major platforms all around the world. So thank you for coming to be with us and sharing. <laughs> and tonight's major platform with Anne is a blessing beyond that. <laughs> I'm excited. 
So tell us about your early beginnings. I, I learned some things about you, and I was so impressed. How did you, when did you, know, when did you come to know that you were supposed to be a pastor? Well, it's wonderful. We can go all the way back to the day I was born, on <laughs> October 11th. 1986, um, my mother, she gave birth to me when she was just 15 years old. Yeah. And, uh, in the hospital, the story's always told that the first person to hold me wasn't even my mother. It was my grandfather. The doctors passed me right to my grandfather. Wow. And in that moment, they said that he began to pray over my hands wow. and he began to lay hands on my mouth. And he said, this young man is going to be a preacher. He's going to be a musician mm. or he's going to be an athlete. Uh, I got cut from every sport that I ever tried out for in middle school and high school. So being an athlete wasn't a part of my journey. Quite obviously, the word of the Lord that he spoke declared that I would be a preacher and I would be a musician was what came to pass. And so, you know, that initial declaration over my life, that's why it's so important that we focus uh, on how we speak over our children yeah, and how we speak even go. over ourselves because our words have power. I'm 34 years old now, and those words that were spoken the day of my birth uh, have been the description of my journey. It's been my biography. And so uh, early on, I fell in love with church. I loved church. I loved playing the instruments in church, and I loved being with my grandfather, who is a pastor, and he would always keep me around, preachers all the time. And so it's something that just kind of fell on me. Uh, but one thing that I love about the early days of my calling, nobody ever forced me. Uh, to say that I'm going to preach the gospel. Nobody made me preach. It was a calling that I knew was from God. My calling was 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 assured. The Lord showed up in my sleep when I was in college at Winston-Salem State University. And um, the dream was powerful. Oh, my goodness. I, I woke up scared. And I had to call my grandfather to help give me an interpretation of why it was that I was driving down I-40. And it seemed like fire would fall in front of me. And I would back the car up in the dream and fire was coming behind me. And then I would try to go to the left and there was fire there and tried to go to the right and there was fire there. And it and it just, it, it, it overtook me in the dream. Yeah. And yeah. I woke up and I'm saying, Lord, what was that? And my grandfather helped me to understand. He said, Marcus, whenever you see fire, oftentimes fire represents the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's when I knew the Lord was letting me know, you can't run from me. Wow. You can't run from my fire. And that's when I accepted the call to preach. I was just 20 years old. I was a junior in college. And uh, for the last almost officially 14 years, I've been preaching the gospel and doing exactly what God told me to do, how he told me to do it. And we've been able to reach so many people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store next. Yeah, because see, you are, you don't, you don't pastor in a physical building, no, right? No. You are as I say, a church without walls. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. I love it. Social media opened that door for me. Uh, uh, we were able to build a social media page at a time when nobody else was doing it like that. I mean, <laughs> nobody was doing this. I was called all kinds of names. I was called all kinds of jokes because folks could not take seriously what I was doing on social media. Yeah. We, that, we grew our following to over two and a half million people. It's still growing. Uh, we've been able to uh, uh, stretch out the television, many books that we've written. Um, and then, of course, our live worship experiences. We don't just leave it to the Internet, but I go from city to city and I meet up with the people that follow me online that have become partners, the people that watch us on television or the people that catch us on radio. And we have services, of course, post COVID, we're getting back into it. But we would uh, go to a different city once a month and we'll have what we call the Victory Life Worship Experience. <laughs> My wife will worship and I do the preaching and people will come. And uh, those are our live services. So it's not like you can come to Myrtle Beach to visit my church. But when I come to your city, you're coming to the service. And so mm. we're looking forward to how that's going to continue to grow again. Now that we're kind of trying to get back to normal uh, post pandemic. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think God's going to bless it for real. I do, too. I, I, I already see it. I already sense it in my spirit Amen. that greater Amen. is coming for you. Great Amen. is coming for your ministry. And Glory I tell God. you what, you continue to do what the Lord called you to do. It's better to, to answer the call of God in your life, what he has said for you to do, than to listen to the voice of me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There were so many. It's so funny because you know how everybody began to take their internet ministry seriously. Yeah. Once uh, 
COVID-19 started taking over and we had to shut down. So many pastors would call me and they were apologizing. It's amazing. It's wonderful <laughs> that they would be humble enough to do that. But they were calling and they would apologize. And then some of them said, they said, Marcus, I repent. I'm talking about men that were older than me, some younger. And they said, man, we didn't realize that you were ahead of the game. Yeah. Mm. What you were doing that we thought wasn't serious. Oh we all need that anointing now. Yes. And yes. so, of course, I, I let them swim in it for a while, but then I find a way to help them and encourage them. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody can be blessed. Because, you know, when you have the spirit of humility on your yes. life like you did, because, you know, when you humble yourself, the word of God said, so when we humble ourselves under his mighty hand, that he yes. would exalt us in due season. So Amen. <laughs> That's Amen. what I Amen. see God doing because you didn't Amen. rise up in your flesh. You didn't That's think, right. you know, woe is me and all this. You say, God, whatever your will is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah. God's will, his will only. Not my will, but your will be done. You know, growing up in, in the church of God in Christ, they always taught us to say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your way. And so I've learned to say yes to God in all that I've done and in all of my doing. And then watch this. When we say yes to God, uh, Isaiah said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So when you wow. say yes to God in obedience, you can also say yes to your reward. Yes to joy. Yes to increase. Yes to healing. Yes to yes to your prayers being answered. <laughs> so I'm saying yes to God in all ways. I'm telling you, I'm not going to miss it. Well, I tell you what, I um. I'm thankful again for you to be with us tonight because, you know, we all need that encouragement. We all need to know that there's greater that God has for us. It's, and I'm, I'm thankful that God chose you and brought you into the kingdom <laughs> wow, <laughs> for wow. this time. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Amen. So you are an amazing author. You have written 10 books. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we got... We got two more that's going to try to come out before the end of this year. So please yeah. be praying. So how did you know that you were supposed to be an author? I mean, you know, we know you're a pastor. We know yeah. the preachers on the inside of you. Yes, Amen. Because you even, in, in, I think you said 5K, you even wore your little suit to the kindergarten and your Bible, yeah. your necktie. <laughs> you sure enough did some research. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I've got a whole lot to send to you of me in kindergarten. Everybody else had on their shorts and flip flops and their little Spider-Man t-shirts. I wanted to wear a suit. And, and not just a suit and tie, but a suit and tie with suspenders. <laughs> because been on. the teacher said it comes dressed the way you, who you see the call of God in your life, right? Yes. We had to dress as, as our future. Yeah. And that's what I want. I, I said, I'm going to go as a preacher. <laughs> and then I, I got photos of me and some of my little friends. They look like I'm their pastor and they look like they're my members. <laughs> that's exciting. That's exciting. That's right. that's yeah. Right. And so since that time and you start pastoring, you start preaching, you know, when it, okay, so you just heard the spirits. God has said, I want you to write a book. Well, you know, my prayer has always been, Lord, use me in any way you see fit to get the word out. Yeah. So whether it's whether it's preaching, whether it's writing, whether it's recording radio programs, podcasts, using social media, you know, uh, just just being alive. However, Lord, so uh, the word of the Lord came to me from a, a lady who was actually an early partner of our ministry, and uh, she was a member of a very prominent pastor's church. I don't know if we're permitted to call names and things like that on here, but uh, yeah. she was a <laughs> Well, she was a member of uh, Pastor Creflo Dollar's church in New York. Um, so we were living in New York, and I would go there to visit uh, the service sometime, and I'd sit way in the back and just watch, you know, <laughs> see what was happening and hear the word. And she was a member there, and she she actually seen me in the church, and uh, she said, I follow you online. This was back when I probably had maybe just a little 50,000 followers on, on, on Facebook at that time. And she recognized me, and then she began to show up and travel with me and my family and stuff like that, and, um, you know, she spoke to me one day. She said, Marcus, if you don't mind, I want to speak this word to you. She said, but the Lord said, you need to write a book. And she said, when you write your first book, she said, your ministry is going to go to a whole nother level. Wow. Because that book will be your tool that you'll carry with you that people will be able to take after they hear you speak and hold it in their home, hold it in their heart and be able to read even more. You can't get it all out in a sermon. But she said, write a book and watch how your ministry changes. And I wrote that book, believing that word. And sure enough, God shifted my life. I mean, the ministry mm. just began to expand. Wow. Soon after that, I ended up getting my first book deal. 
uh, with a very blessed Christian publishing company. And then after that, we started self-publishing on our own because, you know, we just realized the value in that. But it's just been a blessing. Those books have really been uh, a blessing to so many. I actually, uh, Annie, I love it when people get my books and then they take a selfie with the book and they send it to me and I'm able to post and share all those pictures. It lets me know people are really being blessed. It's just not a product, uh, but it's a tool for prosperity. And so that's why <laughs> I like to keep doing it. <laughs> well, there's two things I want to tell you before we go to a, a song. First okay. of all, you remind me of Clef O'Dollar. <laughs> oh my goodness, Lord have mercy. <laughs> You know what? I, I'm a, you know, I, I hear that quite a bit, and you just confirmed it again. So I, I'm, I'm gonna ask God, Lord, I received that anointing. <laughs> and the second thing is, I don't know if your book has been, your books and your videos have been translated in different languages, but I see that I, coming next. If that hey man, I receive it. I receive it. It's coming. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, we right now, see, we're having a great time. I'll tell you why. It's, we get ready to go to Elaine Mitchell Jones, and she's going to be singing the anthem. Amen. <laughs> Praise God.
Oh my God, can somebody at home just raise your hands to the Lord tonight and say hallelujah. Oh my God, Jesus won the victory and because he won the victory, we got the victory in Christ Jesus. Tonight, we are having a wonderful time with Pastor Marcus Gibb. He's the author of a book. Well, he's written several books, but tonight we're going to be focusing on the book titled, I See More Love. So, Pastor, we want to talk to you about your book tonight. And, you know, I love the title of your book. For You know, it's just amazing. Just that love, just putting that love in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, the Lord blessed me to write this book. Um, when I was pastoring a brick and mortar church, I was pastoring a wonderful church in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, there was um, th there was the leading of the Holy Spirit, of course. But then also what I noticed in the church, there was a lot of division. Uh, the church I was pastoring when I'd gotten there, it was 90 percent white. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and then after a while, you know, of course, there be there began to be a balance. People weren't leaving. But after a while, more blacks begin to come, and then we had uh, more Hispanics coming, and then we had, ended up having an uh, all-Spanish-speaking service on Saturday. It was just growing by leaps and bounds. And the wow. most impressive thing about the ministry was the diversity, the multicultural and multiracial ministry that the Lord allowed us to uh, build there. It was just a blessing. And uh, the Lord led me to start teaching on love because there were some things happening <sighs> as the church began to get mixed. <laughs> that were hurting some people. And uh, there was uh, a lot of confusion mm -hmm. as to how it is that we can all get along because a lot of folks had never you know, dealt with people that were of another race and they had never been around people that weren't in their same age bracket. Wow. Uh, let alone uh, some church were just, so, some folks were just so churched and saved that they didn't realize or even know how to deal with uh, new converts and sinners. And yeah. so I said, Lord, I need to teach on love. And so I did a one month uh, sermon series and I called it uh, Demonstrate Love. That sermon series got so good to the people. They were just so <laughs> in love with that message that I ended up adding another four weeks to it. it I just kept teaching on love and we begin to see the love of God revealed in our church like never before. We started having a family and friends weekend and oh, everybody would bring a dish. It, it, the, the level of fellowship just began to increase and it was awesome. And out of that, I said, you know what, Lord, this message can't stop here. I need to create a tool for this. And so I uh, got with my team. I said, let's do a book. I want to write a book based on this sermon series, Demonstrate Love. And then it hit me. Don't call the book Demonstrate Love, but call it I See More Love. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily with our natural eyes, but it was almost like a declaration in the realm of the spirit to say, I don't see a lot of it now, but these words and this wisdom in this book I do see it in the realm of the spirit. Yeah. My grandfather yeah. always taught me this. He said, Marcus, learn how to see before you see, or you never will see. Wow. And so I took that concept and said, I see more love. Mm. Declaring that it's going to increase in advance as people read this book. And this book has actually been a blessing to us so many. I haven't had a chance to really talk about it a lot because we got slowed down with the pandemic last year. But so many people have ordered it and have gotten it and have shared testimonies of how they're reading it in their Bible study clubs, some of their book clubs, and they're using it even within their families. When I wrote the book, I said, I don't want this to just be for church folk, but I want people to learn how to demonstrate love in the house, learn how to demonstrate love in the church, learn how to demonstrate love in the workplace, learn how to demonstrate love even when it comes to the people that you don't agree with. <laughs> and if we do that, I believe we can get along better in our country and all around the world. I think there's an old famous saying that said, can't we all just get along? <laughs> I think we're still searching for that. But when we demonstrate the love of God more, I believe that love demonstration is going to change the world. Well, you know, um, Pastor, when I was looking at some of your videos and I was just viewing them and I was saying, oh, my God, he's so powerful. That's the reason why I refer to you as the love pastor. Because wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Because. <I> was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, because that's what I see coming yes. from you. You have a heart of love. You, 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 you've been through a lot in yes. your life, in your young life. Yes, ma'am. But I saw, I see love that's coming from you. And you, yes. you, that love is spreading abroad wow. to everybody. And it's contagious. It's, it's catchy. Yes. 
So thank yes. you. For <laughs> I received that. You know, uh, an old song we learned when we were kids growing up in church, our little sunshine band would sing it. And it was a song that said, Beloved, let us love one another for lovers of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He who loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. You know, and that scripture was our little theme song we sang in the church as children. Yeah. Well, it's powerful because learning that song, that scripture never left me. Beloved, let us love one another, not just your friends. Yeah. Not just the people that do you right. But that word another had nothing to do with people that you like alone. But that let us love one another. Let us love everybody. Why? Not mm -hmm. because they've been so kind to you or not because they've done you a favor. But he says, let us love everybody because love is of God. Uh. <laughs> and everyone who loves knows God. You know, uh. and so it's a thing of it, it goes even further. It says he who does not love does not know God. There that you is go. such a statement in the scripture. If you do not love, the yes. word of the Lord comes to us and tells us, if you don't love people, yes. you do not know God. Uh -huh. So it's impossible for anybody to say that they're a Christian. It's impossible for anybody to say that they're a saint. It's sure enough impossible for somebody to say they have the Holy Spirit in them, and they intentionally choose not to love somebody. Because if you do not love, the Bible says, you do not know God. You may think you know him, but you don't know him. Because if, if, if you can't love a person who's hurt you, you don't truly know the agape love that's been available for you. You can't say you don't love somebody. You hate this person. You hate the person and say you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. A sinner can say it. A non-believer, fine. That's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. But as a child of God, it is mandatory that we demonstrate the love of God, whether we like a person or not. Whether a person has done us dirty or not, after all, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to a world that just might not even appreciate it. <laughs> but he still sent them because he loves us that much. I, and so I try to teach folk love, love. <laughs> it's the only way to be like God. That's the only way because the word of God says, how can we say we love God whom we have not seen yet hate our fellow man that we see every day? That's you know? the word. <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. Mm. And, you know, love can be difficult sometimes. I, we, we'll, we will never be able to love people the way that God loves us. Let's just be honest about that. I'm not going to be mm. the kind of preacher that's going to paint this this bed of roses and try to say, oh, we're supposed to just love like God. It, we, will, we will never be able to love one another the way that God loves us. However, we have a responsibility to strive towards it. And to get as close to agape love as we possibly can with everybody that we encounter. For God is love. Demonstrating the love of God is demonstrating who he is. And there are too many Christians, unfortunately, Sister, uh, Pastor Annie, there are too many Christians that are not demonstrating kingdom because they're not truly demonstrating love. Yes. I mean, yes. can I vent just a little bit? Maybe some of our viewers want to say sometime. Go but ahead. I'm going to just vent this a little bit. You know, it, it makes me so mad when I meet mean church. When I meet mean folks that call themselves saints and they're mean, you know, we mm. grew up in those type of churches where people would where you say, why are they so mean? But yet, they, you know, our, <laughs> Jesus wouldn't act like this. Mm -mm. I, I don't like meeting uh, those that are in the upper echelon in the kingdom. You know, your, your more famous pastors or your more famous artists and, you know, they want you to buy their music and support their ministries and show up. But if you run into them in the restaurant, they can't even speak to you. They, now I didn't ask you to sit down and eat with me. All I did was say hello. And I want to just let you know that I appreciate your ministry. But they say, ah, no, 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 just back up. They act like you don't even matter. I say, is that the love of God? Yes. You know, you, you, they, you can't shake their hand. You can't give them a hug. But if, if, you know, oh my goodness, it bothers me. That's why I'm intentional. I'm going to toot my own horn for a second. I love it when people write me and they send letters and say, we met you and your wife in the airport. And I was just shocked because y'all were so friendly. I, I was shocked to see you after your event stand there and shake hands with 500 people until the last person shook your hand and got a picture or got their book signed. That's shocking. And you know what? I appreciate the love, but it shouldn't be so shocking. That should be the norm for those of us that represent the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because just as Jesus was reachable, you and I ought to be reachable as well to demonstrate that everybody is somebody. And that concept comes from mm. the seed called love. 
Yeah. And so I want to encourage somebody today. It doesn't matter who has mistreated you. It doesn't matter who's talked down to you. It doesn't matter who's kicked you to the curb. Listen to me, my friend. Look in this camera and hear me loud and clear. The love of God is limitless. Mm. It ain't just available for just a few people. There are no elite erudites who are the only deserving of the love of God. God loves you right where you are. And what he will do is, if you feel lonely right now, what the Lord will do, God will put people in your life who will love you right. They'll respect you. And their love will come with longevity. And listen to this here. Their love will not come with a hidden agenda. The only agenda I have with loving people is to know that they're happy <laughs> and that they feel loved and that they feel blessed. And so be encouraged, man. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I just took over your no, show. No, no, no. No, you didn't. No, uh-uh. No, you, listen. Let the Holy Spirit have its way tonight because we, that's what we want to do is give God the honor. Somebody at home needed to hear that tonight. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what they've come up against. We don't know how they've been mistreated. So thank you for sharing oh, it and keep on sharing. <laughs> it's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy. I, I believe that the Lord wants us there. Yeah. The more, uh, the more kingdom representatives that he has, Yes. demonstrating his love, the more souls we're going to win. The more lives will change. The more bad news will begin to dissipate because God's love is being demonstrated in every area of our lives. So that's why I wrote this book. I gave wisdom keys on how to demonstrate love and prosper in every area of your life. That love seed is set you up for a blessing. And I really believe that. Well, you know, I read the scripture um, where it says, um, so now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest, the greatest. Yes. Greatest of these. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's love. That's because it, cause love is God. Yes. You know, I often teach this. God doesn't just have to, God doesn't just show us love. Yes. He is love. God doesn't just release love. He is. So, you know, I even got to a point where I would read the word. Yes. And anywhere I see the name God, it's okay to put the word love. So, you know, even if you look at, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the basis of our foundation is love. If you put love there, you say, for love, so loved the world <laughs> that love gave his only begotten. You get what I'm saying? I get it. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with love and the word was love. So even our very foundation, the establishment of the world our existence is based on love. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So if God is love, in the beginning, love created the heavens and the earth. We're here because of love. Wow. For God is love. He is love. So anything he has done, that means love did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we uh, we often say that, you know, I've heard it preached, I believe it, that it wasn't the nails that kept Jesus on that cross. It was the love of God. Amen. Praise God. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, well, <laughs> that was good. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to kill that one. I got I to gotta re-preach that. Okay. <laughs> well, right now, we're getting ready to go to Elaine Mitchell Jones, and she's getting ready to sing, You Deserve It. Amen. <laughs> Everything I am 
Everything I hope to be, my hallelujah. hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. Why? I hope y'all are having a wonderful time at home like we are having in the studio because I tell you, the anointing, the power, the presence of the Lord is in the house tonight. I'm so thankful for our beautiful psalmist. Oh my gosh, she's doing a wonderful job. She's ushering in the presence of God. So again, continue to call in tonight. We're going to have uh, Pastor Marcus to to pray over these prayer requests tonight before we close out. But um, again, call someone and ask them to tune in to Nightline. Pastor, there are five blueprints for change. Yes. What are they? Well, you know, anytime we're talking about love, and again, I'm in, I'm in such agreement with you there. No one thing is so rich, you know, even though we have to do it like this. I feel what you <laughs> feel. You know, he's omnipresent. I'm telling you, somebody's getting a miracle tonight. I yes. really believe it. Somebody's going to get blessed tonight because of this message. And, you know, even as we're talking about receiving from God and loving like God, in order to get there, there's some things about us that have to change. And in my book, I talk about five keys, five things that God expects from us. And I call them a blue a blueprint for change. Yeah. And one of those is he expects us to display humility. we got to humble ourselves. If we're going to truly be like God, we've got to humble ourselves and not have our head so far up in the air that we just got to have things our way and got to be my way and the highway. That ain't love. That's selfishness. <laughs> and so being humble 
is key. You know, confidence without humility is arrogance. Likewise, it is that humility without confidence is weakness. But humility and confidence put together, it makes great power. And so humble yourself today. You know, that's a blueprint for change. Another blueprint for change, we got to learn to think less of ourselves and forfeit pride. All right? We've got a we got a forfeit pride, man. Some folks are just so prideful. They want to feel how they feel. Uh, they, they don't want to let go of what somebody did to them. Or, watch this here, sometimes we're on the other end of that. We're the one who's wrong. And we've got to learn how to have enough love in us to say, I'm going to go back and apologize and mean it. And I'm allowed... I'm going to allow my apology to be back with some change Mm -hmm. in how I act and how I behave. Yeah. And so we've got to let go of pride. You know, that's a powerful thing God expects from us. The third one I share in my book is grow up. (laughs) That's a good one. God expects us to grow up. God don't want to stand in the same place doing the same things all of our life. When I was a child, I acted like a child. I spake as a child. But when I grew up, I became a man. All right. Yes. And I put away childish things. God expects us to grow up. There's things that people are holding on to, and they won't love people for something they did to them in the 80s. You know, and he's saying, man, you ain't over that yet. And watch this. Some folk done died and went home to be with Jesus. Uh. You're still mad at them. So it's about time we grow up, we mature, and go to another level so that God's love can be demonstrated through us the way that he wants to do it, you know, uh, according to his word. The fourth key that I give you that God expects from us He wants us to heed to instruction. What does that mean? That means listen to somebody, learn something. And if you get corrected, accept the uh, the correction. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, man. Obedience comes through those who are willing to obey instructions. Yes. And uh, your proof of trusting God in this season, I don't know who's watching right now tonight that needs to hear this, but hear me. The proof of your trust in God is your willingness to obey what he says. My God. You've got to learn how to trust God even when you don't understand his plan. Mm. And being that we're talking about love tonight, guess what? If God tells you to go have coffee with somebody that you don't particularly like, you've got to trust God even though you don't understand. There may be be a million dollars behind that conversation. There may be a, a, a breakthrough for your business behind that conversation. There's some people you don't want to deal with because you don't want to deal with them because they've done something to you or they don't look like you or they may be younger than you or older than you. Listen, there ain't no limit to what God can do or who he can do it through. Wow. And so sometimes God will uh-huh. instruct you to meet with somebody that you that you don't feel a whole lot of love for and that'll be the conversation to shift your life. Because sometimes, watch this here, God will use your enemies to unlock some doors for your future. <laughs> Wow. It ain't always a friend, but you got it. That's why you got to love your enemies because God used them to bless you, too. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a whole <laughs> sermon for another problem. That's a whole nother sermon. Now watch this here. Number five, I'll give you this one that leads into this. Forming the right relationships is something that God expects you to do. Yeah. The Psalm says it clearly. He gives us a blueprint on how to be blessed. He says, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yes nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So it's our responsibility to have discernment, to recognize who the right people are in our life, and then to even recognize who the wrong people are so that we're not carrying toxic people into our next dimension. If you do that, you don't really grow. So have the right relationships in this season. Be intentional about developing the right relationships so that you can be blessed for real. Well, Pastor, have you... Have you, you... You, you have a lot of wisdom to be such a young man. Oh, to God be the glory. <laughs> that wisdom had to be developed from some place in your life. Have yes, you ma'am. been, what have you been through to well, cause it? You know, <laughs> the, 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 the weight of my wisdom comes because I'm intentional about spending time with men and women of God who have wisdom. Wow. You know, I do a lot of talking on my own platforms. But when I'm around those people, I shut my mouth because I'm doing I'm listening. I'm taking it in. So that that's the weight of my wisdom. And then, you know, then you have experience. I've been through divorce before. I've had to bury my first daughter. Uh, I've gone through being lied on on jobs and I've been through living in the attic of my grandparents house. I've been through not having things in my name. I've I've had to go through uh, laying in the hospital because I'm having anxiety attacks and just struggling with dealing with life and 
feeling like I'm losing my mind. I've been through heartbreak. I've, I've lost cars. I, I, I've been through so many of those things. And you know what? I've learned in those situations that the peace of God, oh my goodness, I'm getting excited. Yes. And I, I, I need to see somebody's getting ready for a miracle tonight. And this word is going to help somebody get a breakthrough right now. Because watch this, you're going to understand the love of God and the peace of God isn't for when things are well. The peace of God is for storms because his peace helps us navigate through the difficult times in life. That's what peace is for. Some people say, oh, I'm going to have peace when this is all over. Absolutely not. The peace comes to help you to get through what you're going through right now. Mm. That's why Jesus said in John 16 and 33, he said, in this world, you're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer for I've already overcome the world. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 I could be that silvery tongue preacher to tell everybody watching right now that when you yoke up with Jesus, you're going to march down a bed of roses and forever live on lover's lane. That's not true. Trouble will come. Storms will come. The vicissitudes of life will rise between you and even some of the people you say you love the most. Yes. But the understanding comes that God will deliver you. God's peace shows up in those storms in your relationships and in your friendships. I don't know who this is for, uh, Pastor Ann, but there's a pastor watching me right now, and he's feeling like he's not loved even in his own home. He feels more loved in church than he does in his own home. But let me tell you something. Your members love you, and your family loves you, but God is going to shift your house. He's going to shift your house. I'm not talking about the church you pastor, man of God. But he's going to ship your house. I don't know who this is, but if I'm talking to you, you need to call that number. Humble yourself, man of God. Call and let somebody pray for you tonight. Yes. So that you can feel the love of God that you always preach about. There's, there's people watching right now. And I, it's almost like I see somebody walking through a new kitchen right now. <laughs> I, it's like I smell fresh paint. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to reward you because you forgave that person who hurt you. Woo! I don't I, listen. I can't call names on television like this, but I see in the river of the spirit that the Lord is getting ready to reward you. He's going to reward you with what you thought you couldn't have because of what somebody said you couldn't have. But because you love that individual anyhow, the Lord says, "I'm going to reward you. You're getting ready to step into your new home." There's there, there, there are things you've been believing for for your family in the form of a house. God said, "Get ready. I see you marching around picking out tile." I'm smelling fresh paint right where I am because God is doing something new in your life because you've decided to demonstrate love. And your demonstration of love is going to be followed with a great reward. It's yours. It's already done. Call tonight. Call in tonight and let somebody know. Say, that young man was talking to me tonight. And watch how God is going to cause that thing to be answered for you in the next seven days. Something good is about to happen for you. And this is a demonstration of the love of God for you. Now you've got to receive it and be a distributor of his love too as he blesses you. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, I'm receiving mm. all that. I'm glory, just taking glory. it all in. You know, glory. tonight you are preaching, you are teaching, you're prophesying. Hallelujah. You're doing all that. And I'm telling you what, if the viewing audience is not receiving it, I'm receiving it. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Oh, Pastor, God. you got to come and be with us in the studio. I you know? am. <laughs> I, I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring the G clan. That's what I call my <laughs> G clan. I'm going to bring them and, and we're going to have a great time. I, I think my daughter's going to have a new auntie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> God is enlarging my territory even today. <laughs> increasing your capacity. You haven't seen nothing yet, even yourself. There are doors that are getting ready to swing open for you. Doors, watch this here, and they're going to be doors that are in unfamiliar places. You've been praying about some things specific, but I just, I just, I just heard the Lord say, "Don't limit me. Stop, stop limiting me to, to what you feel is going to happen, and limiting yourself to what you feel you're capable of." I, I see you stepping into doors that are unfamiliar. It's like you looking around saying, "Where am I?" But this "Where am I?" is not a "Where am I?" of confusion. It's a well, "Where am I?" to say, "I never thought that this would be my place." But thank you, Lord, for thank going you. above and beyond. There's new territory for you. So you get ready, too. I, I, I hope I get to step into it with you. I hope but, I, you will in the name of Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Well, Pastor, we, we are so appreciative of Praise you God. being with us tonight on yes. Nightline. Oh, my God. My joy. <laughs> the blessings of the Lord makes us rich. And add a four-month no <laughs> Proverbs 22. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. We had so many people to call in tonight. Wonderful. And 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 first of all, before that though, before we pray out of Nightline, uh, where can we find your book? You know what? I would encourage everybody if you want to find my books and you want to partner with us and stand with us and support us, please by all means first say a prayer for me and my family yes. and our ministry. And then go and visit my website, which is www.marcusgill.tv. There you'll find all of my social media links. You'll find our music, our books, and you can learn more about me, my family, our ministry. And of course, find out if I'm going to be in a city near you for a live worship experience. I look forward to meeting you real soon. Thank you so yeah, much. You'll be in a city near because you're coming to us. You're coming to us yes. really soon. Thank I'm you for <laughs> tuning in to Nightline tonight. Uh, Pastor is going to close this out tonight in prayer. Thank you for calling in. To God be all the glory. We love you. Stay tuned for the second hour of Nightline. Pastor, will you please close us out in prayer tonight? Yes. Thank you, sir. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for these your precious people that are viewing this program tonight. Thank you, Lord, that a man or woman has been blessed beyond measure by this conversation alone. Father, I see in the room of the Spirit that there are many who are watching. They're watching with tears of joy. Some of them began this program crying some tears of sadness. But I thank you that those tears have turned to tears of joy. I thank you, Lord God, that you're opening the windows of heaven and you're pouring out a blessing for these your precious people, that they will not have room enough to receive it in every area of their life. Thank you that your blessing, your blessing is on them. And there's nothing that the enemy can